Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books and today we are talking a book haul. I have a mix of books that I've purchased brand new and books that I have purchased secondhand um, because something I really love to do is to go trawling through um, secondhand shops and seeing if I can find some gems. So hopefully some of the books that I'm going to show to you today will feel like gems to you. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to start with the new books first, my big stack that you can see just down in the corner here. Um, and then we'll go on to our secondhand books. So we'll start with a classic. Uh, and this one is Old Masters uh, by Thomas Bernhard or Bernard. Um, this is a classic that I am going to be reading uh, with my book club where we're reading books from around the world. I believe this one is from Austria, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this is a book that is all about a friendship between two old men. Uh, so it says, for over 30 years, Rija, a music critic, has sat on the same bench in front of a Tintoretto painting in a Viennese museum, railing against contemporary society, his fellow men, artists, the weather, even the state of public lavatories. His friend Arzbacher has been summoned to meet him and through his eyes we learn more about Rija and eventually the true purpose of their appointment. At once pessimistic and exuberant, rancorous and hilarious, Old Masters is a richly satirical portrait of the value of art and the pretensions of humanity. So I am hopefully going to be reading this one very soon. In fact, I was supposed to be reading it in March. Um, so I need to get on to it <laughs> uh, because I have not yet started it. So that will be going on to the immediate TBR to hopefully be read in the next few days. The next one that I have is one that I picked up because it was something I've had in my wish list for some time and it was on sale so I decided to pick it up and that is The Moth Keeper by Kay O'Neill. Um, a, a series that Kay O'Neill has written that I absolutely love is the Tea Dragon Society. I talk about it a lot on this channel. I've reread it a couple of times. The two that I have, the third one I should be getting soon because I've been waiting for it to come out in paperback um, before and so I haven't yet read the third Tea Dragon Society. Hopefully it's coming soon. Um, but this one is another one by Kay O'Neill. Um, so literally this is an author by uh, because I have five star level loved um, their other work. Uh, so it says, being the moth keeper is a great honor. Anya is finally taking her place as protector of the moon moths. The luminous creatures enable the night flower to bloom and the night village needs the flower to thrive. Being the moth keeper is a great responsibility. Night after night, it is lonely in the desert with only one lantern for light. Still, Anya is eager to prove her worth, to show her thanks to her friends and her village. But is it worth the cost? And yet something isn't right. What happens when Anya glimpses the one thing that could destroy what's, what she's meant to protect, the one thing she has secretly longed for her whole life. So it sounds intriguing. It's an author whose work I have loved. I'm very excited to have this one in my collection and to get to it hopefully very soon. Uh, the next ones I'm going to show to you are a duology uh, and they are Drowned Country and Silver in the Wood. Silver in the Wood is actually the first one. I should have said that one first. Uh, and they are by Emily Tesh. I have read these. I read them on my e-reader. Um, and so I actually didn't realize that they, there was a physical copy. I thought they might have been an exclusive digital uh, situation, but there is a physical copy as evidenced by the books in my hands. Um, so yeah, I was just very excited to get physical copies of these books because I read them a couple of years ago now and really enjoyed both. Um, so yeah, particularly Silver in the Wood, the first one, I absolutely adored um, and Drowned Country was also really good. So very excited to have these now. So this is all about, uh, so in the first one, Silver in the Wood, um, it's all kind of around the mythology of the green man, um, if you're familiar with that. Uh, so. It says there's a wild man who lives in the deep quiet of Green Hollow and he listens to the wood. Tobias, tethered to the forest, does not dwell on his past life, but he lives a perfectly unremarkable existence with his cottage, his cat and his dryads. When Green Hollow Hall 
acquires a handsome, intensely curious new owner in Henry Silver, everything changes. Old secrets better left un left buried are dug up, and Tobias is forced to reckon with his troubled past, both the green magic of the woods and the dark things that rest in its heart. Um, so I won't give you the synopsis of the second one, because obviously it's a follow-up to the first one, and it will... It has spoilers <laughs> uh, in terms of how things turn out in the first one. Um, but yeah, very, very enjoyable series for me. And they're both quite skinny volumes. I don't know if that's clear <laughs> um, looking at, at it on the screen. But um, yeah, they're both quite skinny volumes. So it, they're not a long read, um, but they're both very enjoyable. So would recommend those. The next one is a book that I picked up directly from the publisher um it was uh sort of someone i i don't know them personally but i'm in a, a server with them and uh so therefore that's how i found out about this um and it is called ship in distress a in distress a collection of poetry by td baker Maisie osborne and ame smith illustrated by Rhiannon Walters. Um, so as it says, it's a um, collection of poetry by those three authors. And they were written um, in the 2020s during um, our period of isolation that we all were going through. And it was specifically poems that are sort of about searching for hope. Um, and so therefore, it's going to be super, super relatable, I'm sure, to basically everybody. Um, so it says, Baker, Osborne and Smith confront four main themes as they push out onto the choppy waters of uh, isolation. Adoration, loss, nostalgia and introspection. Um, so it's likely to be a brilliant collection. I'm excited to read it. Um, yeah, very excited to read it actually. And when I ordered it, they also sent me through as well some little stickers to do with, with little quotes from some of the poems and some really cute little illustrations as well. So that was very sweet. Um, so if you want to get a copy of that, I'll put the details below um, for, uh, for where you can get that collection because I don't believe it's in shops. I think it is um, one that you just buy directly from the publisher. Uh, another one that I've picked up recently is this one, 365 Poems for Life, by, uh, which is compiled by Ali Asiri. Um, this is a sort of a devotional type of thing where there's a poem for every day of the year. Um, and I heard, uh, I've, I've seen some clips of Helena Bonham Carter reading poems from this collection. So I don't know whether she does the audio book, which would be awesome. Um, but I decided to pick it up. It's a beautiful edition, um, hardback with a really vibrant, beautiful cover. Um, what colour is it? I think it looks like it's yellow. Yellow underneath, which is unusual. Um, but yeah, so I've read a couple of the poems so far and I'm enjoying them. It is a really big mix. Um, some poems I've heard of before and others that I haven't. So yeah, definitely worth having a look into and it is a beautiful uh, book to have in my collection. The next one that I picked up is this one, A Hunger of Thorns by Lily Wilkinson. This is a YA, I think, a fantasy. Um, and the reason that I picked it up is because it is nominated for the Children's Book of the Year Awards by the CBCA, the Children's Book Council of Australia. It's a shortlisted book. Uh, and I don't normally read the... Um, this category of the CBCA. So in my day job, <laughs> one of my day jobs is I work in a school library. So uh, in, a, in a primary school, so I work with young children. So we don't generally get this part of the prize in, we get most of the other categories in, but we don't normally get this, ca this category in. Um, so I didn't need to read this for work. Well, not that I need to read all the others, but you know what I mean. I don't have a particular reason to read this, um, you know, for, for work. But I was looking at 
the synopsis of this one and it sounded interesting. So I decided to pick it up. Uh, it says, Maud is the daughter of witches. She spent her childhood running wild with her best friend Odette, weaving stories of girls who slayed dragons and saved princes. Then Maud grew up and lost her magic and her best friend. Storytelling is her only gift that remains. Odette always hungered for forbidden dangerous magic and two weeks ago she went searching for it. Now she's missing and everyone believes she's dead. Everyone except Maud. Maud is sure she can find Odette inside the ruins of Sicklehurst, an abandoned power plant built over an ancient magical forest. A place nobody else seems to remember is there. The danger is nobody knows what remains inside Sicklehurst either. And every good story is sure to have a monster. So it just sounded really interesting to me. Um, it's the sort of thing that I would have really liked to have read when I was younger. Um, so I decided to give it a try. So I've picked it up. Uh, and I'm looking forward to reading it. And I probably will try to read this one before the winner is announced. Um, and I can't remember when that happens. Uh, but I will be hopefully reading it very soon. <laughs> okay, the last of the new books to show you is this one. It's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Uh, but this edition is uh, has artwork by Yayo Yayoi Kasama, who is one of my favourite artists. Um, if you can't tell by the dots on the cover, a lot of her artworks feature um, dots, spots. Um, and so when I found out that this existed, I just auto purchased it. Um, and also it was on sale, so I was very excited about it. Now I will say, having flicked through it, that the artworks don't necessarily um, don't necessarily kind of match the text um they're just in there so i'll be interested to see like how that goes in terms of it as a reading um a reading experience or if it's just basically enjoying the artworks of yayo kasama while reading the story of um of Alice in Wonderland but one way or another I'm excited to now have this in my collection um, because I really love her work uh, and I'm excited that this exists and I now have it so happy 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 all right that is it for the new books let's reshuffle here and have a look at the secondhand books. Uh, the first one is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This is a book that has been all over the place. I've seen it so many times. I've borrowed it from the library before and just not gotten around to it, etc, etc. But it is definitely one that I've been wanting to borrow. So when I found a copy secondhand, I was very happy to pick it up. Um, this is a, a book that is about um, a relationship uh, between two black British uh, young people uh, and their lives sort of uh, come together and then so seem to be destined to come apart. So um, it's by all accounts a, a really intriguing tale um, but also beautifully told. So I'm excited to get to this at some point. <laughs> okay, next one is Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. Again, this is another one that has been all over the shop. I don't know much about this book other than having heard lots of people speak favorably about it. Um, so it says, sometimes I feel frantic and I feel like everything has just spun out of control, out of my hands. I don't know. I feel a bit like for a while I have been carrying 10 balls of wool and one bell ball fell. So I dropped another to catch it, but still didn't catch it. Then two more started to unravel. And in trying to save those, I lost another one. Do you know what I mean? Meet Queenie Jenkins, journalist, catastrophist, expressive, aggressive, funny, dramatic, loved, lonely, enough. A darkly comic and bitingly subversive take on life, love, race and family. Queenie will have you nodding in recognition, crying in solidarity and rooting for an unforgettable character. So I don't know when I'm going to get to this one, but I've got it in my collection now. So when the mood takes me, I, it will be there for me. Next one is another Charlotte Wood, and I say another because I have so many books by Charlotte Wood and I've only ever read one of them, so I need to change that and get onto more of her books 
at some point in the near future. Uh, this one is the Luminous Solution by Charlotte Wood. Uh, and I believe that this is non-fiction, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, I think this is a collection of essays, potentially. Uh, let me see. Uh, in this essential illuminating book, award-winning writer Charlotte Wood shares the insight she has gained over a career paying close attention to her own mind, to the world around her, and to the way she and others work. Drawing on research and decades of, of observant conversation and immersive reading, Charlotte shares what artists can teach the rest of us about inspiration and hard work, how to pursue truth in art and life, and how to find courage during the difficult times by facing down what we fear and keeping going when things seem hopeless. Um, so this should be an interesting one. I really enjoyed the book of hers that I did read, which is her more most recent novel uh, called, what is it called? Stoneyard Devotional, that is what it's called. Just give me, took me a minute. So I really enjoyed her most recent novel that I read, uh, Stoneyard Devotional. So I um, am looking forward to reading this when I do eventually get to it. All right, next one is a book that I had heard about, but I'd sort of forgotten existed, and then I found a second-hand copy, and that is this one, um, Bill Bailey's Remarkable Guide to Happiness, by Bill Bailey, of course. Um, Bill Bailey, the British comedian, um, who whose work I have loved for years. Um, and it says on the back, what makes us happy? Is there a knack to it? Is it the joy of playing a round of crazy golf? Or just being in a forest. In this beautiful and uplifting book, Bill Bailey explores all this and more while delving into the nature of happiness, all in his own remarkable way. From paddleboarding down the Thames in a Santa hat to wild swimming in a glacial river and cooking sausages on a campfire, Bill revels in the exhilaration of the outdoors as well as the quieter pleasures of letter writing or of simple reflection. Packed with wisdom and humour and with delightful illustrations by the comedian himself, Bill Bailey aims for the heart of pure joy and contentment and how we can all achieve it. So it sounds great. Um, we'll be excited to flick through this one. I don't know if I'm going to read it cover to cover, um, but it might be one that I kind of like dip into every now and again. Okay, speaking of books that you dip into, uh, this is a book that I'm happy to now add to my Christmas collection. It's called A Children's Literary Christmas, an anthology uh, put together by the British Library and edited by, edited by Anna James. Um, so this has some writings from some names that you will definitely have heard of. For example, C.S. Lewis is on the list, L. Frank Baum, uh, Matt Haig, Mallory Blackman, Charles Dickens, Dylan Thomas, Michael Mo Morpurgo, Kez Gray, Laurie Lee, A.A. A. Milne, and many, many more. Um, so, yeah, it's just a, some sort of short pieces, either extracts, I believe extracts from longer works and also short stories in their own right as well. So excited to have that in my Christmas collection. I do like to read Christmas books at Christmas time. Um, this might be one again that I just dip into rather than read cover to cover, but I'm excited to have it. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited to have this. I hadn't seen it before and it's a lovely looking book as well. So it'll look great when I pull out my Christmas books to um, pop them on the shelf come December. So excited to have this one in my collection. And the very last book that I picked up is this one, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. Um, I knew that I knew this name, but I could not work out where I knew it from. And it is from The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi, which is a book I started and then put aside because I had other things on, but I will get back to at some point because I was enjoying it. Um, so yeah, it's the, the per same person who wrote the Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi that came out recently. Um, so City of Brass is, I believe, a fantasy. Uh, yes, because we're talking about magic. It says, nah Nari has never believed in magic. Certainly she has power on the streets of 18th century Cairo. She's a con woman of unsurpassed talent, but she knows better than anyone that the trades she uses to get by, palm readings, czars, and a mysterious gift for healing are all tricks both the means to the delightful end of swindling Ottoman nobles and a reliable way to survive. 
but when Nari accidentally summons Dara, an equally sly, darkly mysterious Jin warrior, to her side during one of her cons, she's forced to reconsider her beliefs, for Dara tells Nari an extraordinary tale. Across hot, windswept sands, teeming with creatures of fire and rivers, where the mythical Marid sleeps, past ruins of once magnificent human metropolises, and mountains where the circling birds of prey are more than what they seem, lies Davabad, the legendary city of Brass, a city to which Nari is irrevocably bound. In Davabad, within gilded brass walls, laced with enchantments, and behind the six gates of the six jinn tribes, old resentments run deep, and when Nari decides to enter this world, her arrival threatens to ignite a war that has been simmering for centuries. Spurning Dara's warning of the treachery surrounding her, she embarks on a hesitant friendship with Ali Zaid, an idealistic prince who dreams of revolutionising his father's corrupt regime. All too soon, Nari learns that true power is fierce and brutal, that magic cannot shield her from the dangerous web of court, po court politics, that even the cleverest of schemes can have deadly consequences. After all, there is a reason, they say, to be careful what you wish for. So it just sounded really intriguing, um, and I decided to pick it up when I found it uh, at... Vinny's on a trip recently so that is it those are my uh that's my haul for the month of march um i hope that you've seen something interesting in the haul um and let me know if you've read any of these books and you think i should prioritize them in my tbr um because otherwise i just go by the mood of the moment um and often books will be sitting there on my shelf for ages before i pick them up um just because i have so many <laughs> so um let me know if there's something i should prioritize if you've loved it um, and you think I should read it soon. All right. Thanks everyone for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.